Hey Masters, if you know me and you've been listening to my podcast, you know health and nutrition is number one. Check out AdvoCare products. I am a distributor. Go to LiveLongerSmarter.com. We got everything you could imagine for your health and nutrition goals. If you're interested, at the end of the podcast, at the very end, there'll be more information on the products. Also, Land Voice is one of our sponsors. They have amazing services. If you need leads, please check out Land Voice for FISBO, Expired, Circle Prospecting, a dialer, whatever you need. Go to David I. Hill. Dot com affiliates you can click the land voice link and all of the special opportunities will be there get ready for one more sale inspiring you with ideas through powerful and engaging interviews with top performers of their field now join us as we discuss techniques and strategies of the coolest and most successful people on the planet Whatever you believe in your heart, you're going to project to others. So when you go in there and you're desperate, you've got to make your mortgage payment, you've got to get this listing or else, you know, your wife's going to get mad at you. All that stuff is what you bring in the listing appointment with you. How do you get 90% of the listings you go on? How do you get them in the first place? It's the power of the subconscious mind, right? And so a lot of times what people don't realize is that what you believe about yourself, you project to others. If I walk in a room and I don't absolutely believe that that person is going to get the absolute best service by listening with me, and if they go with anyone else, they'd be doing themselves a disservice. What up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. Guys, today we are with Nolly Williams, like the infamous Nolly Williams, you know, the guy from Austin. I don't know if he's in Austin anymore. He might be living in like Hawaii now or something, but he's got the cowboy hat. Listen to this. We're going to be talking about listings, listings. I mean, more listings, more listings. I mean, this is listings, guys. Right now, you're in real estate. I mean, it's about listings. And Nolly has the system for success with listings. This guy listed over a 1,000 homes in 10 years in the real estate business. I mean, you know, you got to hear a story. I mean, he went from being in a Christian rap band to being one of the top real estate agents in the country. And and being in Gary Keller's mastermind. I mean, it's just awesome. It's a great story. And man, he's just he's just got some brilliant, brilliant systems that, that just work. I'll tell you what, I'm going to actually go out and sign up for the system myself because he helps you really become a rock star in real estate. He helps you create a book and also a system, a press kit, he calls it. You know, he'll let you figure that out. And then if you do it the right way, here's the cool thing. If you do it the right way, which we're doing right now, it doesn't cost you anything because you, you get all your sponsors and your affiliates to actually take care of the bulk of the cost or, or maybe even all the costs. So anyway, now he's going to talk to you about that. If you're interested in his system, it's called Success With Listings. Just go to my podcast or, or my, better yet, my website, right? David I. Hill forward slash affiliates. Uh, David I. Hill forward slash affiliates. And uh, you'll have information on Success With Listings. The other thing I want to talk to you about real quick is my Master Camp starts August 8th. We've got a couple seats left. Hey, couple people in the camp, couple agents we have doing 150 uh, units closed a year. Another agent pushing 300 units. These are the guys that we're going to be masterminding with for eight weeks straight. We're just going to be going deep on prospecting, on, on whatever it takes to get your business or your skills to the next level. So anyway, check that out as well. DavidIHill.com forward slash master camp lock that seat right now i don't i cannot think i'll tell you the, the cost of it is the investment better word i don't think there's a better investment out there man you get to spend time with me for eight weeks in these ridiculous rock stars anyway that said let's get to gnarly listings listings more listings the guy's killing it hey you guys rock enjoy the show Hey, Masters, welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And you know what? We go out there, we find you the best of the best. We had a special treat today for you. I went all the way to Austin, Texas, and I found Nolly Williams. Hey, what's up, Nolly? Hey, what's up, Dave? Good good talking to you, man. Yeah, good talking to you too, my friend. And hey, it's awesome to catch up. I know we've known each other for years. 
we'll get back into that. But before I, I do that, I want you to, you know, I know you, you're doing a, a success with listings program. So you teach people how to go out there and take listings. And I mean, you know, I can't think of a better time for this interview because right now listings are, are hard to come by, right? And yeah. also when you when you were in the business, when we first met, I want to say it was like 2010 or so, you were taking about 100 listings a year, right? You did, No, it was 1,000 listings in 10 years, right? Yeah. Um, uh-huh. So 10,000 listings. Uh, you're just killing it. So, hey, man, first off, thanks for joining us. Oh, great. Man. Hey, good, good. Now, you remember where we met, right? I, I, remember, we, I remember we had a dinner <laughs> at, at your house. I, that's where I remember it was uh, – it was Seth Seth Campbell? It was uh, Dan Grebe, right? It was um, yeah. Who else was there? I remember it was a lot of fun. It was I think that was the first time I met you. No, we met before that. We met at the uh, train the trainer training. Oh, yeah, that's right, in Austin. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my memory. <laughs> I think I wanted to forget that event. That's probably why, Did man. You? I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, was, that was a tough <laughs> event, man. They put us under the gun. Yeah, it was a tough was event. Was that the one with Kristen Cole when she was? Is that that was? Uh-uh, a, that was no. uh, Antoinette. Antoinette. No, was Antoinette there. was teaching it, but it was Kristen yeah. Cole in the class? Yeah, Kristen Cole was in the class. That's yeah, right. She was in the class. It was uh, you, me, Seth. Man, some big names were in that class, dude. We came out shooting with both barrels, man. All of us, really. You know? Yeah, that's right. That's right, man. I just I forgot all about. Yeah, I just I wanted to forget that class because I just yeah, bombed, yeah, yeah. man. I bombed. Oh, I think we all. I, I <laughs> didn't. I didn't pass bad. that class either. I mean, it was, they designed it to where you don't pass the first time. You know. Yeah. Person. Well, there's there's not passing right, and then yeah, there's yeah. just like bombing, and I think <laughs> I I just bombed, dude. I but anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm a trainer now, so obviously I, I cleaned up my. Mess. But hey, listen, it's great to have you. I mean, you're, you're in the real estate. I know you're not in sales as much anymore, right? You're mostly no, just doing okay. the training. Yeah, mostly just doing the t- training. I, you know, I still keep a small listing inventory because I have a lot of family and friends that, that constantly uh, turn to me, you know, to, to, to list their home. You know, I still got the game, you know, but it's not my calling anymore. Mm. So tell us a little bit about your real estate business. Like, how'd you get into real estate and what that looked like? And then, I, you know, I heard you on, on uh, GSD. And honestly, I don't know why I didn't know your story, but just a great story, man. I really want you to share that with our listeners too, man. Just that, that story of, you know, all the things you went through to get you where you are today. Yeah, you know, probably I, just because I don't talk about it a lot. And, and Joshua, had he, he's got a knack for kind of pulling things out of people, mm. uh, as you do as well. My story began through failure. You know, you talk about bombing. Well, I had just lost my home. I was in the music business. I started in the music industry when I was 18, 19, uh, and I started my first company when I was 22. And fast forward just about, I guess, seven years from the time I started the company to the time I signed on with EMI Capital. They gave me $650,000 advance. Uh, We had 18 artists. We had 14 employees. We had a 6,000 square foot house on 10 acres with several buildings on the property. We had a recording studio. We had an office building. We had a one acre pond, man, the pond was one acre. So, you know, living that way and and, um, seven bedroom home and all this. And we pretty much lost it, everything, man. You know, we got the big money from EMI. We did a lot of things with that money uh, that were good things to do when you have a business. You know, you you invest in your business, try to make it grow. But that industry was in the middle of a shift. Mm. And a lot of times what we find, if you don't shift with the market that you're in, Whatever business you find yourself in, if you don't shift with that market, guess what? You get shifted out of the market. Well, let me hold on. Let me just pause. I'm going to pause right there yeah. just so our, yeah. our listeners can get what you just said. Hold on. We'll just have a quick pause. So if you don't shift <laughs> with the market, you're out of the market, regardless of what industry you're in, right? Yeah. That's, that's what you yeah. just said. Yeah, man. And, and hey, you know, this market's interesting right now. We'll talk about that. Sorry to interrupt you, my friend. No. No, not, not at all. Not at all. So I didn't shift with the market back then. Uh, everything went digital. And I was still fighting it. You know, the music industry went from A track to vinyl to cassette to, to CD, and then it went digital. But now, so weren't I, you doing like worship? Was it like worship gospel music or yeah, what, what kind of? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, it was 100% gospel Christian music, but it was also 100% rap, rap hip hop. Hmm, you know? Okay. So it was, a, it was a niche of a niche. And we pretty much owned the space. We had the, uh, we had the world's number one Christian rap label. Which, by the way, ain't saying much, right? <laughs> it's a niche of a niche, small little market. Hey, right? that's, we, that's why it's a niche, right? <laughs> yeah. But we're making 150 grand a month within wow. that business, you know? And so, so it, was, it was a lucrative business for us, and, and we were able to turn that money back into the business. And we were doing it more as a ministry, you know, anyway. But, you know, since the market shifted and we didn't shift with the market, 
we ended up, our sales went down 70%. And so we couldn't hold on to the things that we had, you know, all the stuff that we had had, had built around us, my wife and I, it was slipping through our fingers. Just slipping. Mm. And so uh, we finally, we were in foreclosure with our house. We were, couldn't make the mortgage payments and the bank was about to foreclose. My sister-in-law was helping us by taking money out from her American Express card so that we can make our mortgage payments. You know, that's how it had come down, down that far. And then through the whole process of selling that house, I kind of learned about the real estate process. Mm. And I was really praying, like, what am I going to do next? What's next for me? I took a uh, inventory of all my skills. A lot of people were like, man, you do good in real estate. The thing is, Dave, a lot of people get into real estate and I talk to them later. You talk to them later. Some of them do great. Most of them don't. And they got in the business because somebody told them that they would do good in real estate because they, they seem to have the attributes and the, the maybe the charisma or the, or the skill set that it took to be successful. Mm. Uh, but a lot of people, you know, the overwhelming majority, 68 percent do not succeed. They're yeah. out of the business. Yeah. So now you're on this big ranch, right? The market yeah. shifts on you. Everything goes digital now, right? That's happened mm-hmm. to a lot of industries. You just can't, you can't sustain in that industry anymore. So now all of a sudden you, you did a short sale, right? If I'm correct, you actually ended up short selling your house, your ranch, right? Yeah. That house we were able to sell outright. We ended up with a little bit of money. Oh, got it. Okay. I did short sell a house later. I did file bankruptcy later. <laughs> uh, so, and, and I did also have a property of mine foreclosed on me. Mm. So I've been through it all, man. I mean, well, I, well, you know, and that's what and I, I know when we first, uh, it wasn't obviously when we first met, you already clarified that for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember we were out, out at your uh, your place. You had a nice condo out in Austin, really nice place. You know, we had this, this whole power group of people that just came from the Gary Keller Mastermind. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we all had dinner out there. It was amazing. So let's go back to that time now. You're mm-hmm. in real estate. You're taking tons of listings. Bring us back to that spot and go forward. So where are we then? And and let's talk about like how did we get to where we are today? Yeah. So when I got in the biz in 03, I started right after expireds. I mean, that's all I pretty much what I cut my teeth on was expired listings. Of course, I did my sphere of influence. You know, I did that from Jump Street and I had a farm, but expires was my game. When things shifted around 07, 08, I started going into short sales. Because what I realized was a lot of people, a lot of listings were expiring back then because people could not sell the property for what they owed. They couldn't clear. So then we started going. I was like, man, what's this short sale all about? So I started learning about that and then got real good at doing short sales. And then as the short sale market shifted, I shifted out of the short sale market. And I think when you and I. Because I was going to say, when we met, you were like, you were the short sale guy. Like you were like known for short sales, right? You had the cowboy hat and. Yeah, you get yeah. signs. Like you're like a niche master, man. Because right there, KW, you were doing their maps coaching, all that stuff. You were like the yeah. guy for short yeah. sales. Yeah. yeah, I did that for years. And the truth is, man, a lot of people have a temporary memory span, which is good because when you have to bob and weave with the market, it's cool. You know, you could be a short sale guy today and a luxury person tomorrow. It's no problem. Yeah. Yeah. This business in this business. There's a lot of opportunity in this business. So when you and I met, you know, I was in the top of my game in that market because I made a decision back then, Dave. I said, you know what? I will never again. And I call you Dave. I don't know. I, you know, a lot of people call you Dave, but I, I've come fond of calling you Dave. If that's yeah, cool. Hey, you know? yeah, I'm all right with it, dude. You know, it's, it's good, <laughs> yeah. man. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Yeah. I don't have a, much of a preference on that. So it's, it's what, yeah. whatever works, man, whatever works. So I, I made a decision, man, when I lost everything is that I would always be willing to be pliable and flexible and shift. From that point on, I, I never wanted to experience what I experienced, you know, losing everything. Because life happens to us for a reason. There's a purpose behind everything. And if we allow to, ourselves to learn from that purpose and we move forward into our destiny, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Mm. So I think by the time you and I met, I was really on top of my short sale game. I was at that time, we probably had uh, probably a hundred and some listings. You know. Yeah, you were you were killing it in short sales. So obviously, you know, we're not going to spend a lot of time on short sales. I mean, there's yeah. a, yeah, yeah. a couple out there, but you know, it's probably not the market right now. We want to think no. too much about. Let's jump right into the present, man. Listings right now. The good news is when you get listings, you know, multiple offer situations, thirty showings, over asking price. It's great, but it seems like right now a lot of people just aren't 
willing to list for a different reason. So let's talk about your program, Success with Listings. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the program first off. Give us the essence of the program. What I've come up with, a lot of people, because I'm a systems person, I think like an engineer. You know, when you take me through the AVA or the DISC profile or the, or the KPA or whatever the test might be, I always test out as an engineer. Like that was supposed to be what I what I was supposed to be, which thankfully I didn't know it at the time when I was younger because <laughs> so, I don't think I would have enjoyed being – no offense to you engineers out there. You know, engineers is a, is a, is a great gig. But what I like to do, Dave, is I like to break down every single system into linear steps and a step-by-step -step system that anyone can follow, hmm. right? So what people kept asking me for was they wanted to know, after I shifted out of short sales back into traditional and started doing tons of traditional listings, they wanted to know how could you bob and weave through different markets? How can you be so nimble? And how can you uh, have sellers trust you coming in from one niche to another? And what I would explain to people is, which is I learned in the music industry is that if P, if you become famous and this is what I teach people, the essence of what I teach in, in success with listings is I teach agents how to become well known, how to become famous in the markets that they are, are in um, and how to do that with specific tools uh, that they use. You know, mm. what I learned in the music business was that when you're a known person, a known artist, I mean, you and I know that there's artists out there that are unknown that can sing better than some of the ones that are on stage, right? Getting Grammy awards and whatnot. Some guys out there on YouTube and stuff like that, they can sing better than these people. But the fact is nobody knows about them. They're not marketed, they're not promoted, and they don't get the deal, right? And so I learned in the music industry that the more well-known you are, the better you brand yourself, the better you market yourself, people start to, to have more of an affinity toward you and they start to trust you and they start to believe in you before they have ever even met you. And that is so important. It's so important. So yeah. obviously people need to know who you are in, in order to get listings to start. Then w when they know you, right, and I'm assuming yeah. and you tell me this is through through like, uh, well, give us maybe, why don't you give us a couple nuggets on, okay, how do people get to know you? Like what are some areas so our listeners can say, okay, after this interview with Nolly, here's two things I can do right now to go get more well-known in my market. Yeah. Well, first of all, just pulling back from that, just one step. Our listeners need to realize that there's really three buckets where the listing leads that you need are going to come from. And that's going to be your sphere of influence. Number one, people that already know, like and trust you. Number two is going to be a farm, some area that you have chosen to dominate. And then number three is going to be your niche. Now, what far outweighs all of those is going to be your SOI. There's no doubt about it, because seven out of 10 people say that they chose a realtor based on somebody they either knew or a referral from someone else. Hmm. So you got to be top of mind, one of the top two or three agents or less. If you could be the top agent they think of when they're thinking about you know, getting their home listed, you got it. Because you and I know, Dave, that 68% of people, 72% uh, of people, whatever the different statistics out there, meet with one realtor before they list their house. Hmm. So what I always tell people is if you can have, I'm going to give you a couple of tips. Number one, um, I use a seller guide. But here's what I did. I said, you know, what do famous people have? It's not hard to look, get out there and look and see. If you're a famous person, you have certain things that other people don't have. All you got to do is look on uh, the people that you're interviewing or you look at. I used to look at the Oprah Winfrey show. You know, a lot of people don't like the show. But one of, one of the things I used to look for is what do these famous people have? You know, if you want to be famous, what are you going to do? You're going to look at other famous people and see mm. what makes them famous. Um, and so some people say, well, is it fake it before you make it? Well, I tell you what, if we had a top a artist that we knew was going to be a top artist, we didn't just push him out there like a rookie. We put him out there like they were already a star. So when people saw him, they said, man, this guy, who is this dude? Where'd he come from? Man, I never heard of this guy before, man. He, and he's already got all the bells and whistles, right? Well, when you come out in your market, you, you need to look like a star already, when you hit right from Jump Street, what we call it, right? So uh, the, the tools that I came up with for my listing practice was three things. Number one, I came up with a book. It's a seller guide because I looked at on all these talk shows, people are like, you know, and I got a book, you know, for realtors. It's called Success with Listings, right? Well, I said, I need to have a, a book for sellers. And I called it Consider It Sold, The Complete Guide to Selling Your Home. So having the book now creates that, like you said, looking like a rock star, like that validity, right? Like, okay, this, right. is, this is an agent now, knows his stuff, they've got a book, right? Exactly. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, because if, if you look on a talk show, like, 
Conan O'Brien or, or I always go back to Oprah because I'm old school. But, you know, it's like they're always on there. Hey, my new book is coming out next week. Well, mm. I've got a book and my new. Well, I, I just released my new book. You can't even hardly get on these talk shows without having a book. So, so this is a seller guide now. Like, is this an actual like book or is it like a, a yeah, pamphlet? A Oh no, no! So so now it's, it's, everybody's got to go out there and write a book now, or what? What are we doing here? <laughs> well, see, and that and that's what that's what I would always coach because you know I've been a coach for many years, and I would always coach my students. Look, what helped me? I wrote a book, um, and I had at the time I had written it very specific to my market. I said, go out and write a book. Mine's eighty pages. It's perfect bound, so it's it's exactly a book. I mean, it looks just like a book you pull off the shelf. Hmm. And when you hand that to somebody, they may or may not ever read it. But the fact that you're an author and that you wrote a book on selling homes, you got the, the thumbs up from them. Right. And so a lot of my students were like, man, I, you know, because it's 13,000 words, they don't have the time. They don't know how to write yeah. a book, how to go about it, whatever. So I had one student said, man, why don't why can't I just use your book? I said, well, wait a minute. <laughs> I said, that's my you know, I was, I was a little bit of pride, ego going. I said, that's my book. Now go, go get your own book. But what I did was at that time, I went ahead and, and genericized it. And so I created a, a book that anyone can use in any market and they don't even pay for it. It's a license that they receive from me, but their sponsors pay 100 percent of the license. Cost. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So on the back of the book, we have a preferred vendor directory. We've got a handyman, a carpet cleaner, a home inspector, a moving service, a house cleaner and a painter. Each of those pays ninety nine dollars to be on the back of the book and it pays for the license. So it's actually so it's a tool that I've used in my business that if realtors want to plug it into their business, they could do it at no cost to them at all. Um, so the book is the first thing. You know, you have a book. People that are famous have a book. You should have one as well. Whether have, you write your own or license, you know, it doesn't matter. Awesome, man. I have a book. Yeah. I have a book, as a matter of fact. Oh, that's right. You got I have, I have, man, I have, I have the, sales, the sales playbook, <laughs> man. Kid, come that's on, right. man. Hey, Masters, I want to remind you about Master Camp coming up August 8th, 2017. DavidIHill.com forward slash Master Camp. Here are a few testimonials from a couple people who have gone through my past camps and know me personally. Hey, I'm Erin Holloway. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I took David Hill's class and I definitely recommend it. I'm definitely more confident. I got five listings from it, so I definitely recommend taking his first camp class. Why'd you take it? Why'd you sign up for it, by the way? Um, I just wanted to get sharper. I wanted to get better. I was in a different market center and I, was, I just wasn't going anywhere and I was like, I need to get sharper. So someone recommended the class to me and I'm definitely grateful I well, did. And I'm grateful that you did it as well. I mean, you were engaged, you stayed there through the whole camp, and that's what makes it work. Yeah. So thank you. Welcome. Everybody at Seth Campbell, I want to talk a moment about my buddy David Hill. You know, a lot of people don't know it, but Dave Hill is actually in my market center where I first started my real estate career. I remember being a part-time person just getting my license, walking in and seeing the number one producer in the office. I had so much respect and admiration for this guy. He actually taught the very first class I went to, and it was about FISBOs. And I saw this guy say, you know what? Here's the phone numbers. Uh, this is how I get my phone numbers. Here's the script I use. Here's a copy of what I give them, what I mail to them. Here's what I do when I go to their house. And I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to do this. And we live close to each other. Are you sure you're okay sharing this? He's like, hey, buddy, there's enough to go around. And I want to do whatever I can do to help you. So from day one, as long as I've known this guy, he comes from contribution. And he is the master prospector. This guy gets more appointments than anybody I know. I know that he took seven listings his very first first month in real estate. I know his whole story because we've grown up together in real estate and he's one of my best friends there is. And I trust nobody more than David Hill on how to get appointments and prospecting and scripts. He is the master of all prospecting. Hey guys, Tyler Lemoyne here, Keller Williams, Atlanta Partners in Gwinnett County. I'm giving a shout out here to my man, David Hill, for the outstanding class that we had, his FISBOs and expired boot camp. One of the main reasons that I took it was help to increase my knowledge and get better at my skill set at calling expires and FISBOs because it's a very huge part of my business and I do it religiously every day. And learning from uh, experts like David and hearing what other people in the country are doing really helps me grow as a uh, realtor and as a as my business scripts. I would highly recommend it to anybody taking it. The systems that David gives you are unbelievable. The calls are great. Practicing scripts and uh, role playing with other partners are uh, really what you need to get you over the edge and get you off the fence and get you lead generating and calling these expires and FISBOs. So David, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great one. Welcome back. 
to path to mastery. Anyway, so the first step, having a book or, you know, obviously our listeners are not going to go out and, and write a book. So you just created a massive shortcut, right? They can, yeah. yeah. and I'm assuming, uh, you know, the book is going to have all their contact information on it, their photos. So it makes it look like they wrote the book or what, what does that look like? Absolutely. Yeah. So basically it's, it's, uh, so what we did was we created it, we genericized it. So we took all the knowledge stuff out because I didn't write the book for anybody else. I wrote it for me, but then what I realized is that a lot of this stuff was consistent with every market, whether it be, you know, deciding to sell your home, chapter one, marketing your home for sale, chapter two, pricing your home, chapter three, same stuff that any realtor would say across the country, right? Same how we coach people. So essentially it's in Microsoft Word, so it's completely editable. So the person could either take it as it is and not edit anything in it because it is useful as it is, or you just pop it up in Word and change a few things. Now you got, but definitely the cover, you know, it has your name, your photo, your title, whatever you want to put on it. And then I basically become the ghostwriter for them. Because what I realized is a lot of my students weren't going to do what I was telling them to do. That's the number one frustration from, for a coach is you tell people what to do. You tell them how to, how to get success. Nolly, how'd you list over a thousand houses in the first 10 years? Well, here's how I did it. Then they go out, they don't do it. So I said, if I could make it easy for them to do to where they're actually, you know what, what would make it easier than to just do it for them? <laughs> yeah. So that's the first thing. Second thing is you got to have a killer pre-listing package. I call that a press kit. You know, you can't go on any movie. If you're an actor, if you're not Russell Crowe or you're not one of the big names, you know, Julia Roberts, whoever it might be, and you're going to go for the part, you know, there's 39 actors in a film and you want to be the bad guy that plays this particular role, you're going to have to put in your press kit. People want to know if you want to audition for that role. So you don't just show up and it's, it's almost like your resume, if you will. So I call my pre-listing packet my press kit. Mm. So I got a, I'm a famous person. I got a book. I got a press kit. And the press kit has very specific ingredients in it, um, which I actually, I don't want to make this into one long commercial. I give all my students that as well because it's completely editable. I tell them, here's what you need to have in your press kit. Three months later, they haven't put one together. So I put one together for them at no cost. So what are some of the things? So I got two questions here. First off, what are some of the things that are in this press kit? Yeah. And then what's the difference between the press kit and the book? Because to me, it sounds like. You know, similar, right? We're sending two books or, you know, it sounds yeah, like... It's, it's a great question. So a lot of times what happens, Dave, is it, like my press kit is only 14 pages. See, what, what people do is they, they create a pre-listing package. I've seen them all and I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not hating on nobody's press kit um, or a pre-listing package. I've seen 60 page pre-listing packages, 50, mm-hmm. and I've had them all. I've seen them all and I've had them all. And finally, at one day I said, you know what? After all these conversations that I've had with sellers... And this is belly to belly, toe to toe, cheek to cheek, face to face. It's not like I'm working with banks and I'm getting 10 listings at a time or 50 listings at a time. A lot of people did that. They did, they did it what I call the smart way. I did it one listing at a time, you know, just like you're doing it, Dave, right? So it's one seller at a time. And I said, what, what are the things that they're really snapping to when I talk to them? And so I put those together. It, it came out to just 14 core pages. Now, the book itself is really, you know, my books cost like, my seller guide is like two dollars and eighty five cents to print the book, right? Per book to print. So the cool thing about that is it's more of a that serves me more as a step by step guide as we're going through the listing process. So people are like, hey, I'm just thinking about selling my house. I'm not really ready to talk to you right now. I say, oh, I understand, Dave, you're just thinking about selling your house. You're not ready to talk to anybody because you don't want to be, quote unquote, pressured. Right. So I'm going to give you a copy of my book. That's going to help walk you through the process that I take all sellers through without you ever having to sit down with me. Because, Dave, you and I got to face it and I got to I had to face it. With, it was a blow to my ego to realize that people just did not want to sit down with me mm. because it's like if I, I just went and bought my wife a, a new SUV not too long ago. What's the last thing I want to do? Sit down with a salesman. Right. And I knew the guy. He's a friend of mine. Right. I did not want to drive on that car lot and sit down with the guy. Because that's the last, what, and you better believe when I showed up at the car lot, I was ready to buy a car. Because yeah. it's the last thing I want to do. And what people ought to understand that are listening to this, when a seller sits down with you, the last thing they want to do is sit down with you. So when they actually sit down with you, they're pretty much ready to sell. Yeah, no, because I, I get all, that. You know what I'm saying? So the book actually walks them through the process before they ever sit down with me and meet, meet all right, me. So, so just to clarify for our listeners, so the... Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm thinking like the pre-listing packet goes out first and then you bring the book with you. But no, it's, it's different than that, right? So you're mm-hmm. saying you're, you're sending the book out to everybody. Then when they're ready to list, 
Did I get in the pre-listening packet? Yeah, great question. So I, I, I include them together. So I have my pre-listening packet, which is one you know packet of, like I said, the 14 pages. And then I have the book in there as well. And then I have the third item that we talked about or that, that I mentioned. And that's my what I call my movie, my movie. Right. And, that, and what is that? That's my pre-listing video. It's like a demo reel. Like if I'm an athlete or an actor or whatever it might be, a famous person, I'm a singer. Uh, what do I have? I have a demo reel. You know, if I'm an athlete trying to go for a team, I got my highlights. I got a, I got a video of my highlights. Right. So if I'm a realtor trying to get that job, I've got my demo reel. I call it my movie. So I've got a book press kit and a movie. I'm a rock star, right? So when I, so I, I include all those things in that and it doesn't cost a lot of money. People think, oh, that's a very expensive. It's not. Even the, uh, the book printing with the money that I generate from the sponsors on the service directory that's on the back of the book, we can get 300 books a year printed at no cost to us, no cost out of pocket. See, here's the thing. If you get the listing, those of you listening to this right now, if you sit down with the seller, you know, and you list that house, you already know you can sell that house. But the seller doesn't know that. The seller doesn't quite trust or believe that you can do it. So what happens is all these tools, if I'm going out for a role in a movie, the director of the movie may not believe that I could be that part. Now, he might think I could, but he's not sure. But I know in my heart that that part was created for me. I know it. But I can't just show up and say, hey, man, I know this part is for me. He got to see some proof of that. So I gave him my demo reel. I, man, I gave you a book all about what I can do. Plus, I gave you uh, my press kit. What else do you need? You see all that. You're like, man, this guy, who else am I going to call? All right. So I love this. And I want to back this up, I guess, because I think we all get now. These are the tools. This is what's making us different, right? I mean, mm-hmm. when they're mm-hmm. meeting with, with other agents, uh, you know, right now, I, I know you said it was, I think, 67%. We're seeing it might even be a little bit higher in, in certain areas where they <laughs> yeah. are, people are meeting with two or three realtors. So this is certainly right, going to help us stand right, out. Right. How does this help us get in front of people? Like, because like I said, I have a book, you know, I have the sales playbook. I've, I've sold a couple thousand copies, but frankly, I'm not out doing um, book signings and, and going on tour and all that other stuff to get people familiar with my book. I mean, it's on Amazon. So how are we getting those people even conversations with us so that we can get them this press kit and this book and, yeah, and all that. That's a great question. So that really goes back to what we talked about earlier is the three lead buckets, you know, your sphere of influence, your farm and your niche. So there's very specific strategies that you have to implement in order to get at bats. That, that's what we're talking about now is how do I get at bats, period? I mean, it's cool that, you know, how, how do people call me up in the first place? Right. And so, you know, what I teach is an 18 touch strategy for your sphere of influence. Because if 70% of your business exists in that one bucket alone, that's where the money should be coming in in from. But the reason why a lot of people aren't getting money from that bucket is because they're just not staying in touch with people. And they're not doing it in a systematic way. And so what I teach is there's a way that you could do it that takes about an hour, uh, about an hour a week, right? And it, and it costs about $100 a year out of your own pocket. So there's no excuse not to stay in touch with those people. So the 18 touches, it's, uh, what is it, uh, e- a series of emails, phone conversations? What, what does that look like? Yeah, so what I have found is a successful mix is 12 email newsletters, e-newsletters, and it's got to be set it and forget it. I don't want you guys creating your own newsletter from scratch. You won't do it. Something will come up, you'll get some listing appointments, and you, the newsletter won't go out this month. So it's got to be a service that just sends it out. So you sign up for that 12 times a year. Then you, you send them four postcards, okay? That's a direct mailing to, we call it snail mail. A lot of people are hating on it. They don't love it. They don't like it. But snail mail is effective. So you hit them four times a year with a, with a jumbo postcard. It could be a five by seven, eight and a half by five and a half. And then twice a year, guess what? You pick up the phone, phone yeah. and you call your top 200. Wow, that's simple, man. That's that's brilliant. That's like brilliantly simple, my friend. Uh, now, is, are the newsletters, is, is that part of the program as well in the postcards or is... Is this something outside? Is this part of your kit? Well, the newsletter, I mean, I, I, I share with people all my scripts and stuff like that that I, that I use. Uh, the newsletter is something I personally use uh, more souls. It's a CRM that I, that I own. You so know, there's an really, add-on. Yeah, it's five bucks a month if people want to use that as a newsletter. I don't really care what people use, but you got to use something to set it and forget it. In other words, you sign up for the service. 
you pop in your photo and things like that. And then you've got a publisher and other people that come up with the articles and send them out because really what all you're doing is you're touching people. You're tapping them on the shoulder. You know, the truth of the matter is, Dave, people only move about every six to nine years, right? Depending on if, unless you're on a military area or something like that, they move more often. So the truth is a lot of people could care less about what I found in my practice. They don't care about what homes are selling for and stuff like that until they're within a one year time frame of them selling. But what they do want to know is, hey, is Nolly still in the business? Is he still selling real estate? And I'm just tapping them on the shoulder and say, hey, I'm still here and I still sell real estate. All right. So they're getting 18 touches. They're getting your newsletters. They're getting the postcards. They're getting two calls a year. Now, when somebody identifies themselves to you that, hey, you know, I'm actually considering selling. Now they're going to get in the mail your, your pre-listing packet, right? Along with the book. Yeah. Okay, so as far as like the numbers go, have you done the metrics yet? Like we know yeah. how many people, if there's a, a thousand people in our database, what should we expect from this like conversion wise? Yeah, so what I believe, a lot of people don't realize this, but the truth of the matter is you could actually, and I teach this, you could actually get about 60, 80, or even more listings from just 20 people that are in your database. But you got to understand which 20 people they are. OK, that's it. That's what I call my inner circle strategy. Now, that's a whole nother thing where you basically identify uh, and uh, I'm just going to rattle it off real quick for, for time reasons. I mean, I teach all this stuff in, in my book, Success with Listings, which, which people can get free on, on successwithlistings.com. We'll send you a free copy. They just pay the shipping because I teach a 46 step listing system. Right. It takes a lot of time to teach it all, but I love to teach. So it doesn't matter. You know, it's just the time constraints that we have. But what I tell people is if you were to really get in, first of all, you should have your top 200. OK, if you have a thousand people in your database, I don't teach that you should call a thousand people. You should call your top 200. Now, from that top 200, you should have your top 20. These are people that do business with other people every single day. It might be a doctor. It might be a dentist. People that are in contact with other people. And then what you teach those people is you teach them how to recruit for you four or five leads a year, or even if they did three or four a year, you get a commitment from them. I call it anchoring into a higher purpose. So the short version of the strategy is you've got to create some kind of benevolent activity that's behind this, a higher purpose type activity. So let's just give an example. Let's say, for example, I wanted to provide wheelchairs for those people in, in Austin that were didn't have access to a wheelchair, right? but they need one. And so what I decided that eat every wheelchair is going to cost me $500 to buy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take from every closing that I do, I'm going to donate $100 toward a wheelchair, right? So that means that I need five closings in order to donate a, a wheelchair. Now, let's further say that this year I have decided that I'm going to donate 20 wheelchairs. So how many listings will I have taken in order to donate 20 wheelchairs? Well, you're going to need 100 closings, right? Exactly. Okay, so you got a lot of good stuff going on here, and I think people really need to connect with you and you know, get your book and you know, get into your, your selling seminars and all that other good stuff you're doing. I want to talk about some of the challenges right now. Like, What are some of the biggest challenges you're seeing with agents? Why are they not more successful with listings? Yeah, the number one challenge with agents right now, Dave, is their own mindset their own mindset. And this is something that you, you and I both know. People would ask me all the time, how do you get 90% of the listings you go on? How do you get them in the first place? It's the power of the subconscious mind, right? And so a lot of times what people don't realize is that <clears throat> what you believe about yourself, you project to others. So what happens is if I walk in a room and I don't absolutely believe that that person is going to get the absolute best service, not only the best service, the best customer service and everything else, by listening with me. And if they go with anyone else, they'd be doing themselves a disservice. I actually believe, I actually believe that in my heart when I go on the appointment, you know, cause there's times when I don't get it. I actually don't feel sorry for myself. I feel sorry for them because they've done themselves a terrible disservice by going with anyone else. And here's the thing. If you don't absolutely believe that in your heart, whatever you believe in your heart, you're going to project to others. So when you go in there and you're desperate, you got to make your mortgage payment, you got to get this listing or else, you know, your wife's going to get mad at you. All that stuff is what you bring in the listing appointment with you. Yeah, I agree. And I think too, and, and you know, the reality is, and I'm sure you agree with this, is it comes down to a lot of things. It, it comes down to knowledge. 
It comes yeah. down to preparation. <laughs> it, it comes yeah. down to knowing what you're going to say, knowing yeah. your numbers. All of that plays into it. And when those things are in place, then your mindset can be in the right place. Then if you have this kit, this strong, solid kit that you can send out to people and you have your book and every, then, then they're going to feel more confident going in. That's right? the key. Man. Absolutely. So tell me, when people hear about your kit, Nolly, like what are the biggest misconceptions? Well, there's a couple of misconceptions. One is, uh, you know, every now and then you'll have somebody says, well, I don't know if that'll work in my market, right? Uh, I can tell you I've taught in over 70 cities across the country, in 70 cities. Not too long ago, I was in Queens, New York. The guy was like, the, at the beginning of the seminar, three-hour seminar, he said, man, I'm not sure if this will work in my market. I hadn't even spoken one word. <laughs> you know? But here it is, a guy with a cowboy hat comes down to Queens, New York, t- trying to teach them something, right? And so by the end of the seminar, everybody in there agreed that everything that I teach works in every single market. Because the truth is, there are some markets, like, for example, when I was in Hawaii recently, that can become, so you could have a self-limiting belief, like, what if everybody else in my market has the book, right? That could be a self-limiting belief. Or how many people are in my market? Well, the truth is, most people only know two or three realtors. So if you just do the math, if you have, uh, like, in, in Austin, there's 10,000 realtors. That may be an abnormal high number. Uh, I know in Houston, there's a lot more. But let's say there's 5,000 realtors in your city, right? Well, the average person only knows two or three realtors. So even if 1,500 people were doing the strategy, then you'd have to have 1,500 of them doing it in order for them, for the math to work itself out to where somebody will run across another person doing what you're doing. You know what I love about all this personally is, is that it's, it makes you different than yeah. everybody else, and you're going to stand out. And I, and I agree with you. There's no way every realtor is going to start sending out a book. Uh, uh, I think this is niche, like you said in the beginning, and uh, and and it's going to work. And it's going to work because the same thing that reason why postcards are working again is because everybody else got away from sending postcards. Right. You know. That's exactly so, right. You know, if you if you go back and listen to some of the old school marketers like Dean Jackson and Joe Polish and those guys, they're going to tell you this stuff's foundational, man. So Absolutely. let me ask you this: You gnarly. I mean, you've you've been through a lot of ups and downs, man. I respect you a lot. You're always on the top of your game. What makes you successful, man? Well, you know, I, I attribute my success to the Lord. I'm a believer. I'm, I follow the Lord and, and the principles of the Bible. And I think that you can't get in order to have success. You absolutely, whether you believe in God or not, you absolutely can't get away from biblical principles. Because I actually have another class that I'm teaching spiritual business mastery. When you look at all the great teachers, no matter what they label it, you'll find the principles that they're teaching that are guided in success come straight from biblical principles. So that's been my guiding thing. What I want a lot of people to do also is to get away from debt. Another biblical principle, my wife and I, you know, we paid off our house a year or so ago. Uh, We paid off everything that we own. You know, I believe in in using some leverage debt, if you will, to build companies and stuff like that, because I I have multiple companies. I'm doing six and seven figures in different companies. But the truth is, the less debt you have, the easier it is, because you're not going to be motivated by lack. See, when people have debt, they're motivated by lack because, man, I got to make this payment. I got to do this. When you don't have debt, you're motivated by what makes you tick. I say, man, I like Dave. I'm going to do a podcast with Dave because I like him and, and it's a good use of my time. You know, we can, well, I appreciate that. You see what I'm saying? So, we could do another whole episode on, on yeah, debt yeah. and all that good stuff, man. So, <laughs> all right. So, give us a book recommendation. Um, you know, something that our listeners like. If there was one book that anybody had to read to become successful in real estate, what would your book recommendation be? I would give a couple of them. What really helped me from the beginning was Millionaire Real Estate Agent. All right. From the very beginning. Okay, we all say the millionaire real estate agent. We get yeah, that. So what's yeah. the other book outside of the millionaire real estate agent? You know, I said this on a, another podcast, and the guy kind of was, uh, Nolly. But when he got the book, he said it's the, it was the best step-by-step book he's ever seen in the business. And that's my book, man, Success with Listings. Success uh, with Listings. Yeah, it's 430 pages. Let me say it again. It's 430 pages, and none of it is fluff. I mean, it's step-by-step. I, I mean, you, you, you've seen my, my systems in the past, Dave. You know when I put a system together, it is step-by-step. No, it, it, hey, 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 you yeah. know, in the beginning, you told me you had an engineer. You are like an engineer, dude. You have built so many things since I've known you. So <laughs> keep that up. Give us a book recommendation, like beyond success with listings, because that's what yeah. our listeners yeah, yeah, are going to yeah. get to take listings. They, they get the millionaire real estate agent. 
What's the book that you read that made you successful when you're going through all these ups and downs? You know, what was the book that helped you keep moving forward? One of my favorite books that I'm and I'm constantly reading, I love to read, but one of my all time favorite books is uh, The Power of the Subconscious Mind. Uh, I mean, I just think it is a, uh, and I'm trying to remember the author's name. The of Power it. of the Subconscious Mind. It's an mind. old book, man. And I read a lot of old books, but it is absolutely key to, I think it is. Joseph Murphy is the author of that book, and it's, it's an audio book. Awesome. So if you go to davidsfreebook.com, get yourself a free copy of The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. Awesome. So, Nolly, what question that I probably should have asked you that I didn't ask you, man? Mm. One thing that I would say, if I was to close, is I would say more people need to introduce leverage and automation into their real estate business. That's a whole other conversation, I know, because a lot of people, one of the self-limiting beliefs that they have is that the bigger they get, the harder it's going to be. And I'm here to tell you, the more deals you do a year, the easier your life becomes. Man, I never worked so little as when I finally hit 120, 150 deals a year. I was working four hours a week. But you got to have the right leverage to do that. Very critical. All right. Final question, man. I remember 2005. Yeah. I was writing offers on hoods of cars, <laughs> you know, because as, as we were leaving the property, the other people were going into the house. If we didn't write the offer, we'd lose a property. We were having open yeah. houses. We'd have 30 people show up, multiple offers, house is gone. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Absolutely. That's what's happening right now. Absolutely. You remember, we remember what happened not far after, right? 2006-ish, <laughs> we had a, a big, big crash in the market. What, what are your yeah. thoughts on the market right now? I just want to get your perspective. Yeah, you know, it's hard to say as far as what the people say, hey, it's going to happen again like it did. We, in our market, you know, Austin has always been sort of insulated. We didn't really get that bubble back again, but the prices are going nuts again, right? So you already know that in a couple of years, our economy, I hate to get in this whole conversation, but our economy is built on a house of cards. We already know that. You know, we, we live in a fiat money system, right? It's good that real estate is going the way it is, but here's what I want to tell agents. Don't get lazy. Don't get lazy. Because when real estate is good like this, oh man, I'm just, I, you know, people are going to just list with me or if I get a listing, I'm not going to market it properly. Every listing you take, you should be having four closings. OK, you, for every listing you take, you should have four closings. You should close what? The listing you just took. You should get another listing that closes and two buyer leads that close. Yeah, we're not going to go into that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right now, I, I agree with you. I agree with you 100 percent right now. The, <laughs> the challenge we're having with that is the listings are selling too fast. You can't do they anything are. from them except. So we got to be creative, maybe do some pre-marketing and some coming soons and stuff like that. That's the but I get that. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, man, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. Well, obviously, we could have went on for hours with this conversation. <laughs> but how do our listeners get in touch with you, Nolly? They want to take advantage of your listings, success with listings kit, your book, all this great stuff you got. How do our listeners contact you? Uh, go to successwithlistings.com. Successwithlistings.com. We've got tons and tons of free stuff there, man. All right. Hey, man, thank you. I appreciate your time. Love you, buddy. Appreciate you. Hey Masters, you guys know how important health and nutrition is to me. I just want to talk to you a little bit about products I use called AdvoCare. I've been using these products for about a year and a half now, you know, mostly just for energy. They've got a really awesome drink. It's called Spark. You know, if you want to check out anything, I would tell you, go check out the energy drink Spark. That's what I did for, like I said, almost a year and a half without even trying any of their other products. And then this past January, uh, a bunch of us, January 4th, decided we were going to do the 24-day challenge, which is a 10-day cleanse and then 14 days of just really healthy eating, vitamins, uh, meal replacement, just awesome 24 days just to kind of get yourself on track and, and get into some right habits. So Richie Ryan did it with us. Guys, he lost, today's February 5th, I think he's at 24 pounds lost since January 4th. 
Melissa at our office uh, lost six pounds. Uh, Min at our office lost five pounds. Uh, guys, I mean, listen, th- it's amazing. I, what, regardless, if your goal is losing weight, my goal wasn't losing weight. I did the challenge just so I could experience it. And, you know, I actually I lost a few pounds, but now I, I put some weight back on because I started using some of the supplements and the protein powder and all the other stuff. So now I've gained about three pounds of muscle and just feel awesome. My energy's through the roof. So whether you're looking for energy or you're looking for just wellness, I mean, they've got some amazing green products that I, I love taking before I go to bed. Or if you're looking for performance, athletic products, uh, we've got the athletic performance products. And then just active, you know, if you're an active adult, uh, maybe getting a little little older in the age and you want to just keep everything working the right way and functioning. Listen, Gary Keller said it best. If you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? And I, I just love that. So, hey, I just ask you to check out Advocate's products. I'm a distributor, so I'd love to help you talk to you about your nutrition and health goals. You go to LiveLongerSmarter.com. LiveLongerSmarter.com. You are listening to One More Sale with your host, David I. Hill, author of The Sales Playbook. Get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.